This lesson will talk about Objective 2 from our practice test B. We're being asked to construct thermochemical equations and enthalpy diagrams for chemical reactions. We want to indicate if the change is endothermic, simply by noting the positive sign for heat being absorbed, or exothermic, knowing that if it's releasing heat, delta H will come out negative. The heat of reaction, delta H, called enthalpy. If we consider four sodiums combining with oxygen to produce Na2O, this is a combination reaction. We note that the reaction itself is negative 178 kilojoules of heat. Delta H equals negative 178. Right away we're noting that because of this negative sign, heat is being released, it is indeed exothermic. Since the delta H is negative, we know that heat is being released from the system. In terms of an enthalpy diagram, we simply want to show, on a set of axes, the reactants and products separated by their heat content. Heat is measured in kilojoules for this particular equation. So heat obviously increases on the y-axis. As we climb up the y-axis, we gain more and more heat. If the reactants lose heat energy, that's the definition of exothermic releasing heat as they form their products, we know that the reactants of sodium and oxygen will indeed let go of negative 178 kilojoules of heat. When reactants form products, we point down. If heat content is increasing as we climb up an axis of the y axis, reactants lose heat as they form their product in an exothermic reaction. The complete combustion of methanol, CH3OH, releases, keyword, releases 1150 kJs of heat per mole of the reactant. Let's write the balanced thermochemical equation. Again, to review, the skeleton for combustion takes our hydrocarbon, methanol, CH3OH, requires oxygen during combustion, and out comes carbon dioxide and water. We need to balance our equation. I like to do C's, then H's, then O's. One carbon looks good. One, two, three, four hydrogens. So I double my product. Let's count those oxygens. One, two, three, four oxygens. And again, I have an odd number. So back to the drawing board, let's try doubling that first reactant. If we try a 2 here, 2 C's, 2 C's, 4 times 2 is 8 H's, so a 4 here. And now we have 4 plus 4 is 8 oxygens on the right. Here's 2, so we need a total of 6 more, a 2 to 3 to 2 to 4 ratio. Notice this value says 1150 kJs of heat per mole of the reactant. But we have two moles when we balanced our equation. Heat is being released. I need to show that as exothermic. But since I placed a coefficient of 2, I have to double my heat quantity. 1150 doubled is 2300. Now let me repeat why we did that. 1150 kJs per mole is released, exothermic, negative sign. When we doubled, we have to consider doubling that reactant is going to double the amount of heat released. Here is indeed our balanced thermochemical equation. The enthalpy diagram simply separates the reactants from the products based on their heat content. Heat is given to us in kilojoules. As the reactant, methanol, combusted with oxygen, it released heat, forming carbon dioxide and water. 
The amount of heat that was indeed released, 2300 kilojoules for every 2 moles of our reactant. Our third problem, 5320 kilojoules of heat is required for the decomposition of potassium chlorate. Let's write the thermochemical equation. A decomposition. Potassium is a plus one. Chlorate, our polyatomic ion, who's a minus one. Potassium chlorate is a white powder that will decompose upon heating. Helpful hint number four, I want to say. Helpful hint number four talks about chlorates and how they decompose. On your helpful hint, metal chlorates decompose to give the metal chloride an oxygen gas. Here we have an eight chlorate turning into an eyed chloride. We still need to balance. We'll turn our oxygens both into sixes and double the KCl. The ratio of 2 to 2 to 3 is our balanced equation, but now let's turn it into a thermochemical equation. If heat is being required, we have to input it. That is representing an endothermic value. We have to input 5320 kilojoules of heat to get this reaction to go. Endothermic heat is required. Therefore, when we draw our enthalpy diagram, we know that the reactants will gain heat as they form their products. The potassium chlorate, oops, let me make that neater. The potassium chlorate, KClO3, is going to gain 5320 kilojoules of heat energy as they form the potassium chloride and oxygen gas, pointing up for endo, pointing down for exo. Remember, the arrow will always point at the original products. Reactants form products. If they're gaining energy, point up. And if they're releasing energy, point down. When ready, let's look at objective three. In our third objective, this is the stoichiometry roadmap objective where the heart of our problem not only is a mole to mole ratio, but it could also represent kilojoules. So in the heart of our problem, we'll compare moles and kilojoules from our thermochemical equation. Remember, our stoichiometry is only as strong as our balanced equation. Let's read through the first example. Copper to carbonate absorbing positive value for endothermic 3390 kJs of heat energy and it decomposes. Copper to carbonate decomposes. Pull out that helpful hint sheet. Helpful hint number three talks about carbonates and the way they decompose. Copper, who's a plus two, carbonate is a minus two. Our starting material, CuCO3. When heated, it will decompose. Carbonates will release carbon dioxide, leaving you with the metal oxide. Copper oxide, again, think charges, and carbon dioxide. Our equation works out balanced. When a carbonate decomposes, it gives us a metal oxide and carbon dioxide gas. Here's our balanced chemical equation. We'll turn it into a balanced thermochemical equation by adding on the heat information, the enthalpy change. It's absorbing heat. We know that to be positive 3390 kilojoules of heat energy. Positive 3390 kJs represents the endothermic process. The stoichiometry part of our equation in letter B. How much heat is released? How much heat? So that's my want. I want to know kJs. Is released when 100 grams of copper 2 carbonate completely decomposes. Well, this is a mistake on my part. Heat is going to be absorbed. 
we know that from the original word. So that's a mistake when I change the test versions. Please with me take your pencil, cross off released and make this match to the previous question. Heat will be absorbed during this decomposition. Otherwise the question makes no sense. We want to know heat given the mass of copper 2 carbonate. When we start with our given quantity, 100 grams of copper 2 carbonate, we can see a two-step stoichiometry journey where the heart of our problem will compare kilojoules per mole. We want to know kJs. We want to know kilojoules from the number of moles here. So here's our target, kilojoules of heat. We know it will come out positive because decompositions absorb heat. Now, in the first step, far to the left of our road map, we will take the molar mass of copper 2 carbonate. We need to convert one mole of CuCO3 into a gram unit, so I'll add the formula weight. 63.5 for copper, plus 12 on the carbon, plus 48 for the oxygen we get 123.5. Grams canceled, we're in the heart of our problem. The heart of our problem always comes from the recipe. We want to know KJ's. Its value, 3390 kilojoules. From the copper carbonate, its mole number is 1. Notice what we've done. Step one, canceled grams. Step two, canceled moles, and we're at kilojoules of heat. Hit with me. 100 grams divided by the molar mass of 123.5 times the heat content 3390. And I find a value of 2744.9 kilojoules. We divide, we ratioed, and we stopped. No step three, just a step one, step two, we end with kilojoules. Number two, when zinc metal reacts with nitric acid, heat is being released. When we release heat, it is exothermic, a negative value. Zinc metal with nitric acid. Acids always start with H. H is a plus one. Ick, nitric. Ick came from the original polyatomic ion named nitrate. H turned to ick and we formed this acid called nitric acid. What pattern of chemical change does this represent? We have an element with a compound. The element with the compound is known as a single displacement. Zinc can displace the hydrogen. Hydrogen is molecular, comes out as H2. When zinc now hooks to the nitrate, consider the charges. Nitrate's polyatomic charge is minus one. So when it hooks, we have ZnNO3 taken twice. Then we go back to balance. A 1, 2, 1, 1 ratio. Let's turn that thermochemical equation by adding on the heat being released is 100 kilojoules of heat. Exothermic value, it shows that as a negative sign, heat being released. So here's our balanced thermo equation. Let's tackle the stoichiometry part. Calculate the amount of heat. Here's our want. We want kJs. Given 50 grams of zinc metal, given a mass, calculate heat. 50 grams of zinc metal, step one, step two, we want to know kilojoules. And I know the heart of my problem will be the want over given ratio. I know it will come out negative, it's an exothermic value. In our first problem, we'll need the molar mass of zinc. 65.4 grams, the molar mass of zinc. 
We want to know the heat energy. Coming from the balanced equation, see where it is? The balanced equation says negative 100 kilojoules of heat. What's the coefficient in front of the zinc? Well, it's a 1. Want over given stoichiometric ratio. Step 1, grams of zinc cancelled. Step 2, moles of zinc cancelled, and we've derived at kJs. 50 divided by the molar mass of 65.4 times negative 100 kilojoules of heat, and we get negative 76.45. Exothermic negative sign, although now I wrote it twice. Let's read on. Letter C. How many liters of hydrogen gas are produced? So here's my want. I want liters. From an enthalpy change of negative 50 kilojoules. Here's my given. Assuming STP conditions, that's allowing us to use the molar volume unit, 22.4 liters per mole. Given a kJ, get me to liters. So given the kilojoule as negative 50 kJs, that starts us right in the heart of our problem. We'll do a step two, step three, where we want to know liters of hydrogen. Now, coming from the balanced recipe, we want to know hydrogen. Its coefficient is a 1. For every 1 mole of H2, negative 100 kJs was released. kJs canceled and we're at the mole. Now on the road map, follow it out to the volume unit using 22.4 liters per mole of hydrogen. Step 1, divide. Step 2, multiply, starting in the heart of our problem. Negative 50 divided by negative 100 times the molar volume value of 22.4, and we get 11.2 liters of hydrogen. And one more. How many kJs of heat? We want the kilojoules. Are released when 3.5 times 10 to the 24th formula units of zinc nitrate form. Zinc nitrate formed. Here's our given. The quantity of 3.5 times 10 to the 24th formula units of zinc nitrate. See that target? This is the zinc nitrate. This is our given quantity. We want to know kJs. We'll need to divide, ratio, and stop. We want the kilojoules where the heart of the problem is step two. Now on your roadmap, your stoichiometry roadmap, do you notice if I start with a number of representative particles, we use Avogadro 6.02 times 10 to the 24th units, excuse me, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units in every one mole of zinc nitrate. Using Avogadro cancels formula units and brings me to the mole. We want kJs. Now from the balanced recipe up here, negative 100 kJs, that's the heart of our problem, negative 100 kilojoules of heat are released for every one mole of zinc nitrate that forms. Notice that we want over given. We want kJs. The coefficient here is a 1. 3.5 E24 divided by 6.02 E23 times negative 100. And we get negative 501, and the decimal there would be 0.4 kilojoules. A little stoichiometry review to earn our A plus on objective 3. When ready, we have one more objective to work, objective 4, phase change heat flow.